Hello there, welcome to Proper DIY. The summer is finally here, so it's time to add to my garden furniture. So today, I'm gonna to show you how I built this really rugged table with treated timber and with a concrete top. To make the concrete top of the table, I need to build a mould of the same size and shape as the finished article, where the fresh concrete can sit and cure. So I cut a melamine sheet to exactly 800 by 800 millimetres. The size of the mould needs to be the depth of the concrete you want to make, 40 millimetres in my case, plus the thickness of the melamine board, which here is just over 16 millimetres. I cut strips of this out of the same material and screwed them around the perimeter and very quickly made a 40 millimetre deep tray which I then cleaned with white spirit. The mould is now complete and it's nice and clean, but before I put any concrete in it, what I want to do is create a bevel on the top of the concrete, which is the bottom of this mould, by putting some silicon sealant in all the corners and all the joints and the vertical joints as well. I've got Unibond black silicon sealant here, so it contrasts well with the white, so I can actually see where I've been. Now, you can do this in a couple of different ways. In the traditional way, which is sealing the corner, licking your finger and just running a bead with your finger. I'm trying to get something a little bit more precise. So I've searched around the house for something that's got a rounded end and I've come up with this glass, I think it's a drink stirrer, that used to have a camel on top. And the camel has seen better days. So I don't think my wife's going to get too upset with me stealing this from the kitchen. It's got a rounded end on both ends. One's a little bit bigger than the other. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna run it through the silicon and hopefully make a nice rounded bevel in the corners that will finally replicate itself in the top edges of the concrete tabletop. You don't need much silicon in the corners here to make this effect, but at the same time, if you're short, the round over effect really isn't going to work. So it's a bit of practice getting a happy medium. With the bead in place I can drag the X camel through the silicon around the corners coming back for the vertical pieces. At this point I'm not worrying too much about the excess as I intend to leave this overnight to stiffen up before removing it. So that was a bit of a pain to say the least. I did have this hope that I could pull off the excess mastic as it had set overnight, but no such luck. It wasn't difficult, it was just a bit more of a pain. I ended up using white spirit just to get off some of the thinner layers and now I've caused a bit of a mess on my mould. So this is a part of the video where every other YouTube channel blows off the mould with their compressed air gun. But I haven't got a compressed air gun, so you're gonna have to watch me use my B&Q brush. Sorry about that. Us civil engineers really don't feel comfortable about forming concrete without any reinforcement. So I found a piece of 10 millimeter high tensile rebar that I've been keeping in my stock and removed the light surface rust from it. This type of bar is very common in builders merchants and is great as it's possible to bend manually if you're feeling strong. I bent it into a square around about 100 millimeters smaller than the concrete mold. This is where a reasonably heavy workbench is needed so you don't drag it around your garage. The two ends of the rebar I tied together with wire just to hold it square. The last thing to do before placing any concrete is to oil the mold really well. I'm using butcher's block oil here and liberally coating all the surfaces. 
So this is a little bit strange, but what I'm doing here is actually measuring how many litres of ballast is in one bag, which is going to help me in future projects as well. I need to understand how many bags I need to use to fill this mould. So what I've done using my O-level maths is work out that this bucket is around about 1.9 litres. And if I've used seven of these, I've concluded that this bag contains around about 13 litres of aggregate. Now, I've just measured my mould and that comes to 26 litres. So in theory, two bags of aggregate should just about fill the mould. Obviously, I've got cement and water to go in. That doesn't add that much because it tends to fill the voids between the sand, but it will add a little bit. So I'm going to mix up two bags of aggregate plus a cement plus a water and fingers crossed, I should just about be able to fill that mould. I only want to mix one batch for this pour, so the colour and the consistency is the same throughout. So I mix up a one to three cement ballast mix using two bags of ballast. This somewhat overwhelmed my wheelbarrow, so I temporarily stored a third of it in a tub that I can bring back into the mix in a minute. I'm using a black concrete die here as I want the tabletop to match the slate grey windows on my house as close as possible. For this I use around half a litre of this dye, which is the maximum recommended on the tub. I mix this with water so I can add it into the concrete mix midway through the process, hopefully getting it consistent throughout. I bring back the first third I temporarily stored and mixed it in with the rest of the dye. By the end I have a nice dark consistent concrete mix. Wearing waterproof gloves for this next step is really important because cement is highly alkaline and you really need to avoid getting this on your hands. I massage the concrete into the mould trying to avoid getting air pockets next to the melamine. Then I use my vintage Black & Decker vibrating sander to vibrate the shutter and encourage any trapped air within the concrete to rise to the surface. In the middle of the mould I use a scrap piece of timber to help vibrate that area as it wasn't working from below. With the mould just over a half full I place my rebar into the centre of the pour and cover it by using the vibrating sander to liquefy the concrete. Once filled, I screed across the top using a straight piece of timber and float off filling any holes as I go. cover with polythene and wrap to keep the moisture and the heat in which is needed for concrete to be cured without cracking. So I'm just starting the timber base to this concrete table. I'll just show you on this whiteboard what I'm planning to do and it really all starts with the concrete top. So if you can imagine, we have the concrete top that's 800 millimetres square by 40 millimetres thick. So as I've got a fairly heavy top on this and I want it to look quite tall, I really want like a bar table, somewhere that you can actually stand and have a drink at. The legs, I think, have to be fairly chunky. So I'm gonna be using treated timber fence posts for this that comes out to 90 by 90 millimetres or four by four in old money. As well as that, I'm gonna be putting a rail at the top just underneath the concrete that will help support the concrete. I'm also gonna be putting a rail near the bottom, the sort of thing that you can put your foot on as you're standing there drinking. And both those are gonna be made out of four by two or 95 by 44 treated timber. Now the only problem with this type of design is so far it hasn't really got any stability left and right. There's no bracing at all. What I'd really like to put in is some bracing diagonal, but that's obviously not going to look right and it's going to not look like a table. So unfortunately I can't do that. 
So the best thing I can do with that is put in a nice deep mortise on each one. If I make these mortises nice and deep and nice and tight, then hopefully that will give enough stability, not only to hold up this heavy concrete top, but maybe also prop up a couple of guys after a few beers. I cut the legs to the final length and went to work on the mortise and tenon joints. If you want to learn more about making these joints, I would highly recommend watching my how to build a mortise and tenon door video, where I go into quite some detail on how to get tight perpendicular joints. I dry fitted the whole table before gluing everything together with an external grade wood glue. Back to the concrete top and 48 hours after the pour, I unscrewed the sides and carefully prized them off. Concrete gained strength over weeks and months, so after 48 hours it's still very soft and easy to damage. I use this to my advantage just to sand over the top unformed corner, just to soften the edge. Another three days later and I decided to turn the top over to separate it from the melamine. At which point when it was vertical it naturally separated which is a bit of a shock but does prove that the butcher's block oil works really well. I gave the top surface a very light wet sand as it really didn't need much at all and I'm really happy with the result. One thing I'm a little bit worried about, if you can imagine that this is the top of one of the legs, is water getting in between the underside of the concrete and the end grain of the timber. Because this is end grain, this is going to suck up water quicker than anywhere else on the leg and potentially go rotten quicker than anywhere else. So as well as painting this with black paint to try to keep this really impervious, what I've just done is I've just cut a very shallow groove all the way around the perimeter of the underside of this concrete top. And what that means is that when it rains, water comes off the top and down the side, it will have a tendency for that water to travel underneath. But now with that groove there, when it gets to the groove, it'll have nowhere to go and just drop off and avoid this. This is a little trick that us engineers and architects use on soffits of buildings and underneath bridges and what have you. I never thought I'd be using it under a table though. Over the next couple of days I applied three to four coats of concrete sealer and finished it with a couple of coats of polyurethane clear varnish which gave the concrete that dark black appearance I wanted. With the top complete and the glue fully cured on the timber base I stained it with Cuprinol garden furniture oak stain and coated the top and bottom end grain on the legs with blackjack. Just to give the legs a little bit of added protection from the water, I nailed some plastic feet I had in my stock just to the bottom, which means hopefully most of the time they'll be slightly raised off my patio just away from any rainwater. Before I moved this I wanted to work out how heavy it is, so I multiplied the width times the length times the depth in metres, that's 0.8 times 0.8 times 0 0.04 for 40 mil and then multiplied that by the density of an average concrete mix, which is around about 2,400 kilograms per cubic metre, which means that this calculates out to be flipping heavy. The top actually comes to just over 60 kilograms, or 134 pounds, which is way too much for me to lift. So back to Roman techniques to move this thing from the garage to the tabletop on my patio.
So that is the table complete, installed and already being used by me. In fact, it's really nice actually to have somewhere to sit and have a drink after a long day of DIY. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please remember to subscribe. So from the start of what I think is going to be a really good summer, I'll see you next time.